watching the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and now, here's your host, Data Pioneer. Good afternoon, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and it is the 24th of February. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's surviving the COVID pandemic, and uh, let's get into it. Today, I'm out on my Farron OS Linux system, and uh, I want to take a look at a Linux distro that I have never looked at before. I went back through my videos, I've got several hundred of them now, and could not find a review I had done on this particular distro of Linux. This one, it's Netrunner, and I thought I would take a look at it. And so let's get on out there and uh, to the home page and take a look at Netrunner Linux. All right, so we're out on the home page here for Netrunner, and uh, it is at netrunner.com. I will put a link uh, to this website uh, down below the video in the show notes. And it is a KDE Plasma uh, distro of Linux based on Debian Stable. Uh, there are several different versions that you can get, um, or varieties, if you will. Uh, there's the Netrunner Desktop the Netrunner Core, the Netrunner for Pinebook, and the Netrunner for Odroid. Um, down below the website here, there's some information about uh, Netrunner. We're going to take a look at the Netrunner for Desktop, and in particular, we're going to look at Netrunner 21.01 uh, XOXO released version here. All right, so that's the one we're going to look at. Uh, to get to the download uh, for that particular uh, distro, you can go out and click on this download link, and that will take you out to this website here, uh, which is the download portion, and Netrunner 2101 XOXO, a 64-bit ISO. You can get it from a direct link or from a torrent. It is based on 10.7 Buster with Debian Stable, Plasma 5.14.5. It's about 2.6 gigabytes in size, according to to this, and um, it does have a um, SHA-256 fingerprint that you can verify. Now, I've already downloaded the, uh, um, the ISO itself, and it put it in my ISO folder, and I have verified the uh, SHA-256 fingerprint. The way to do that, by the way, if you're not familiar with that, uh, is let me go out to here and I'll just show you get on my terminal in uh, Farron and if I want to verify it I can just do a SHA-256 uh, sum and then uh, go out to where it is which is the downloads and I believe it was net netrunner uh, wait a minute no nope. Let me do a CD downloads, and it was in the um, ISO folder. That's what it is. So let me do a CD to the ISO folder, and uh, the file is Netrunner Desktop. Okay, so if I do a SHA-256 sum against Netrunner and let that run, it's eventually going to come back with a fingerprint that it determines from that file. Now, if the file matches, uh, has not been uh, manipulated in any way, it's not corrupt, it's going to come up with the same fingerprint that we see on the website. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing here, obviously, but it ends in 369BD06. And so if I look at this uh, fingerprint here, it ends in 9BD06. If I go back out to the website and check it, here it ends in 9BD06, the upper lowercase doesn't matter. Um, then that means that the file is good and we can use it. I've installed it uh, in my ISO folder and we're ready to go out onto the uh, virtual box 6.0 platform, which is my favorite hypervisor, and um, pull it up and give it a spin. So let's go out to VirtualBox 6. All right, so we're out in VirtualBox 6 now. And uh, let me go ahead and call this thing Netrunner underscore, and that's 21 dot or 01 and underscore VM. 
that's what I'm going to call this. And so it is based on uh, Linux, obviously, and it is based on Debian 64-bit specifically. Let's click Next here. I want to give this uh, 4 gigs of RAM, so that's a 4196 uh, megabytes. And so let's click Next here. Let's create the uh, virtual hard disk. And let's let it be a VDI and dynamically allocated. I'm going to give this 26 or 25 rather uh, gigabytes of space, and let's go ahead and create. All right, let's uh, click on settings and take a look at this. This looks all right. All right. So let's go to set system. Let me untick floppy, hit hard disk, and move up the boot order. Um, I'll give this two processors. I have four cores, so I'm going to give it two. Uh, for display, I'm going to give it uh, full 128 megabytes. And select the VG, VBOX SVGA uh, adapter. For storage, I'm going to leave it the way it is, and I'll pick it up whenever it uh, uh, asks for it. And let's click on Network, Attach to, and let's make that change that from NAT to Bridged Adapter. And then USB 3.0 and click OK. Let's go ahead and launch this thing. And it should come up and ask for right. And so here it is. Let's uh, click on that. And it is uh, the Netrunner desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and choose it and start. And then uh, let's click View Full Screen and Switch. And I'm going to hit the Enter key and start the Netrunner. Uh, live distro okay so here we go and uh, so Netrunner is uh, like I said a distro I have not reviewed um, and if you haven't looked at Netrunner we'll look at it together here I'm a fan of Debian Linux and so um, it's a 10.7 buster is what it is and so um, we'll take a look at it it's getting ready to come up to the live version now. If you do run the live version, the username is live and the, the password is live as well. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and do the install as soon as I get into it. So it should be coming up to it here shortly. Here we go. So this is Netrunner. And it's developing the desktop. I got a wired connection over here, uh, and everything looks good. And so I'm going to uh, double click on the installer, and it should be a Calamaris installer if I'm not mistaken. Yes, okay, so here we are with the installer. It says American English, that's good. And let's click next. It found my uh, America, New York time zone, which is Eastern Standard Time uh, in America. Let me click Next here. Uh, we have the English keyboard and uh, default. That's good. Click Next. <clears throat> For this particular uh, virtual machine demonstration, I'm going to just erase the disk. It does uh, set up with a Netrunner uh, root uh, partition and a swap. It's giving me, uh, looks like, 8.7 gigabytes of swap there. That's fine. Like I said, this is a virtual machine. I'm not worried about partitioning. If I were doing this uh, in, on bare metal, I would obviously partition this differently. I'm going to click Next here. Let me put in my name. And Data Pioneer here. And uh, go down. And so I'm going to call this Netrunner uh, VM. And uh, I'm going to choose a password here. And it didn't match, so I must have mistyped it. So let me try it over. And there we go. I noticed that uh, Netrunner does not offer a root password or root user uh, login at all. Uh, we can set that up if we wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Let's go ahead and click Next here. This is the summary of what we're doing, and let's click Install and get it going. All right, so 
Netrunner is installing, and this is going to take a few minutes, probably about five minutes or so, and so whenever it's finished, I'll be back. Okay, so the Netrunner installation has completed, and we're ready to restart. It's got a tick mark in the restart now in the installer, and so this concludes the uh, installation portion of this video and now we're getting ready to restart the system and move into the review portion of the video. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and click done and let it restart. Okay, it's restarting now and uh, we're up to uh, hopefully it'll come up to rather 1920 by 1080. So here it is, it's coming up now. And um, We'll take a look at Netrunner and see what's uh, what's inside the box here. Curious as to whether this is going to come up the full. Yeah, it did. Good. 1920 by 1080. And it took about six or seven minutes, by the way, on that install. So let me go ahead and let me click in here and just make sure it's inside there for focus. Put in my password, hit Enter key, and... Let's get into the desktop. This is uh, Debian 10.7 Buster KDE Plasma. And uh, here we are. Okay, so let the uh, desktop develop. And uh, we've got a wired connection. Looks good. All right, so what I want to do first of all is um, let's come down to the panel. Let's right click on the panel and select options and configure the panel. And I'm going to change the height because this is too um, too heavy, too thick for me. So let me bring that down to about there. That looks good. So it's a smaller panel at the bottom. I like the smaller panel. I don't like the huge panel. Um, and um, our icons are across this way instead of down this way. We can fix that, but I'm going to leave it the way it is right now. So let's uh, let's take a look. I want to change the wallpaper right away. You know, I don't particularly care for this wallpaper. So let me right-click and uh, configure the desktop. Um, well, actually, first of all, well, let's do that. Right-click and configure the desktop and see what's available. It looks like we only have three choices. Um, not a lot to to, uh, to have. I'm going to go ahead and close this for now and open up Firefox since that's the Firefox uh, icon is right there. And let's open up Firefox and um, we'll check and see what version we have. And uh, and then we'll get a, another, another wallpaper to deal with here. So let's do a help and uh, about Firefox. And it looks like we're running... Uh, 78.7 uh, extended support release ESR 64-bit um, and so that's not bad that's probably pretty close to the latest version I would say of uh, the ESR version of Firefox web browser I want to go out onto a website I'll put a link to this uh, website down below the video as well and it is a place where I grab a lot of my wallpapers and it's uh, a secure site called uh, wallpaperscraft.com and here it is and I'm on a widescreen monitor 1920 by 1080 so let me select that and come down to 1920 by 1080 and let's see if we can find a wallpaper that we could uh, install here other than what we have um, let me take a look at it here I uh, kind of like this one here, but let me see if there are any others real quick that are that might look better. Uh, now I like this one. Uh, let me select that one. It's the beach scene. Let me download the wallpaper. Right click and save the image as, and it's saving it as beach sunset. Da da da. da JPEG here. I'm going to save it in the pictures folder. Uh, pictures directory. Let's click Save, and uh, let's go ahead and close the web browser. And close tabs. All right, back to the desktop. Let's right-click, configure desktop, and um, let's add an image. 
let's add the one we just downloaded here and uh, so let's click open and there it is so I'm going to select it and apply it and there we go and so we've got a new wallpaper now on the desktop like I said I will put a link to the wallpaperscraft.com um, website um, down below you don't need to sign up you don't need to log in or anything on the account you just go to it all of those wallpapers are free to use and um, I've enjoyed using those over the years I'll share that with you all right so now we got that let's see what we have uh, let's right click on the menu and see what the uh, alternatives are to the menu it looks like it's on the application dashboard I don't particularly care for that uh, as much as I like the launcher or the menu here so I'm just going to go with the straight application menu and switch to it and so when I bring it up when I left click here it's going to bring it up to a conventional menu that I like all right for games you've got plenty of games here uh, burger space chess frozen bubble you name it okay we've got a lot of games for graphics we've got the GNU image manipulation program uh, Gwynview, Inkscape, Krita. I like Krita more than I do GNU, Image and Manipulation Program, or GIMP. Let's let's click on Krita, and I'll show you what Krita looks like. Krita just has more possibilities. Uh, I'm still learning Krita, but I've uh, been able to do quite a bit in Krita. Uh, and there it is. All right. Let's go ahead and close it. And... Um, Let's come up. I want to get into a dark view. Let me see if I can do that first before we do anything else. System and let me get into settings and uh, system settings. If I can stay on it here. And let's see if I can change the theme here on this particular. Uh, let's see. Plasma tweaks. Let's go with the Netrunner. No, let's go with Breeze Dark. I like Breeze Dark. All right, so we got desktop or look and feel the desktop theme. I'm going to apply that, and there we go. So yeah, we've got it now. And so the desktop theme um, is uh, looks like it is going to be breeze dark, and uh, I'll take the rest of this as the default for now. Let's close that. And so now, if we go back and uh, come back up to graphics and uh, let's get back into Krita one more time I'm, it may have changed the appearance of Krita not absolutely sure uh, if that's gonna be yeah it's gonna be changed so it's a dark appearance I like that better easier on the eyes I don't know about you guys um, if we pull in the image that we just uh, downloaded if I click on file open and select it here and click open it should open that image into into Krita and you can Manipulate it with the tools over here and across the top of the menu. Like I said, it's got a lot of possibilities. And you've got right-click here, and you can do quite a few things in Krita that you can't do in uh, GIMP. Let's go ahead and close it. Come back up and select again. And let's go to uh, Graphics. It's still got uh, Scanlight, which is for my scanner. For Internet, we've got Firefox ESR, uh, Extended uh, Support Release. We've got KDE Marble, since it is a KDE desktop, K desktop. Uh, Pigeon Internet Messenger. We've got uh, uh, Q Transmission, BitTorrent Client. We've got Skype. I don't use Skype. Thunderbird Mail Client. I've started using another mail client that's replacing Thunderbird called MailSpring. I'm not going to show you that in this video. It's beyond the scope. Um, but I may put that in a link down below the video as well. It's MailSpring is a... Uh, uh, very nice uh, client uh, for like your Gmail or, or some other mail account that you might have. I've got a Proton Mail account and I use the web interface, so I'm, I do use my MailSpring for my Gmail account. You might like it. Multimedia here we have uh, Audacious, we've got Cheese, uh, Handbrake, Caden Live. I use Handbrake for rendering uh, videos, uh, changing files. Uh, you know, rendering them into different formats. Caden Live for editing uh, videos. I will be using Caden Live to edit this video. Uh, I'm using Simple Screen Recorder to record the video. Um, Pulse Audio Volume Control uh, and some other things for Office. You got the full Office suite. Let's take a look at Office uh, and Draw Math and Writer. Let's take a look at Office Writer here for LibreOffice. 
see what version we have. And if I bring this up to full screen, and let's zoom in here on the uh, on the document. There we go. And let's go to help and about LibreOffice and see what we have. We have version 6.1.5.2. I know that's not the latest version. Uh, we're up to 7.1 or 2 now, So, but that's okay. Um, it's a fairly recent version. Uh, Debian uh, Buster 10.7 is not a rolling release. So uh, and 20.01 of this uh, Netrunner is not a rolling release distro. So you're not going to get the bleeding edge or the cutting edge, but you're going to get fairly recent stuff. So let me go ahead and close that, and uh, I'll close that out. Let's get back into here, and we were on Office. I think that was covered it all. Under Settings, we have uh, Grub Customizer, Kvantum Manager, System Settings, as I showed you earlier, uh, that we have here. We've got Account details, online accounts, Plasma tweaks. We've got quite a bit of stuff in the Plasma tweaks. Uh, as you can see, colors and icons. GNOME application, uh, we didn't even touch on that. Um, but, but that's really beyond the scope here. Uh, we wanted to see what was available. We're not going to actually get into everything. Workspace behavior. we got user manager for, for system account uh, management. Uh, user account management. We've got date and time. Um, startup and shutdown for applications. We got shortcuts for display here. Uh, I've got an animation speed that's running. I've got uh, um, displays. I'm using running here a 1920 by 1080 uh, screen display, which is nice. All right, and so let's go back. We've got audio network settings. We've got printers and power management. All right, so let's uh, get out of this and go back to uh, system and let's move beyond our settings here. And it looks like that was it. So system, we've got Discover, uh, Dolphin, Info Center. Let's take a look at the Info Center. And that should tell us a little bit about our uh, system itself. In fact, it tells us quite a bit about our system. Uh, some of the things like KDE Plasma version 5.14.5. Uh, we were running Qt version 5.11.3. Uh, talks about my processors, the memory here, the swap that's available, etc., etc. So you could take a look at that. Click on memory, uh, energy information, uh, about the system itself, which we already looked at. For device information, um, didn't seem to switch for that. Network information. Oh, you got to open it up. Okay, so device information, uh, USB devices, it shows you a lot of information. So PCI, quite a bit of stuff here, guys. Uh, too much to get into here on this video. Let's close that. Let's come back up and get back into system again. And so for system, we've got now the KDE Partition Manager. Got console, which is the... Uh, terminal and so let me see if I can bump that up and let me uh, expand the actual size of the uh, terminal here and let's take a look at and see if HTOP is installed it does not appear to be so this is a Debian system so I'm going to run a sudo uh, apt install HTOP to go ahead and install HTOP put in my password If I can type today, give me one moment. And uh, go ahead and install HTOP. All right, and so let's clear the screen, clean up the terminal, and let's type in HTOP. And there we are, so we have HTOP here. I haven't had this system up very long, uh, 13 minutes, and it's already up to uh, 18, uh, 813 rather megabytes out of 4 gigs. Uh, a little heavy, not too bad, but I've got HTOP running it, so that's using some resources as well. Uh, it's giving an idea, us an idea here of the CPU processors, uh, their utilization percentages. We've got 86 tasks, 119 threads, we've got two tasks running, one now. 
Load averages pretty good for one minute, five minute, and fifteen minutes. 0 0.37, 0 0.57, 0 0.48. Anything under two is great. If I hit two here, that means I'm pr pressing the or pushing the system, uh, pressing it beyond its limits, and so we would get into a hang situation or possibly a crash. Not anywhere near it. So we're doing all right there. And the uptime is 14 minutes, 53 seconds. So let me go ahead and close the uh, application, HTOP. Let's do a DFH while I'm in here and take a look at the breakdown. Here is the root petition. Uh, I'm using 54% of it right now. Uh, and so that looks good. And um, let's do a uname all and take a look at that. We're running Linux, Netrunner, VM. Kernel version is 5.9.0.0, uh, AMD 64, so that's great. Uh, Debian uh, or Debian 5.9.15.1. Very good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I have not updated this system, so let's do that. sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, and let's do a dash y. And so that way we don't have to answer yes to the question and let it go ahead and update. So it looks like it's going to be updating quite a few packages. And so I'll go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's completed. Okay, so the update process has completed. That took a little longer than I anticipated. It took about five minutes. Uh, I didn't take it, think it was going to take that long. So we have finished that process. So let's go ahead and exit the terminal now. Let's get back to where we were. And I believe we were on system and I had uh, touched console so let's do uh, we got K Syscard, K Wallet Manager, we got uh, Network Drives, Synaptic Package Manager if you've never used that uh, let me open that up for you show you what that looks like um, that is a uh, an application that you can use to uh, install other applications in the system and um, so if you want to search for a package, you can come over and do a search here. And so let's think of one that's not there. Um, Glances is not installed. And uh, let's click search, see if Glances is available. It is. So let me tick the box and mark for installation. And uh, let's mark it. And then let's apply that. And let's install, apply, and let's install Glances. Glances is... Another monitoring tool like HTOP uh, for monitoring the resources and uh, processes and top processes running on your system. So you can use either TOP, which is the default one in every Linux distro, or you can install HTOP or you can install Glances or both, which I usually do. So it's going to take a few moments here to install this. And um, not only will um, Synaptic Package Manager allow you to install uh, applications in your Linux system, but it'll also allow you to work with your repositories, and I'll show you that momentarily when this installs. All right, and so let's go ahead. The changes have been applied. So if you come up here to, uh, believe it's under File, no, it's Package, Repositories, that's Properties. Where is it? I know it's up here somewhere. There we go. Settings, Repositories. So here are the repositories that are, the ones that are ticked are the ones that are um, installed in the system. If I wanted to select this one here, I could tick it and then go OK, and then that would I'll also be running this particular repository. It would refresh it as well, but I don't want to do that for now. So if you want to get one from the web, you can come down here and grab one for a URL or a distribution uh, and um, pull it in. All right, so a PPA can be incorporated this way as well. So let me click OK. Let's go ahead and close the uh, Semantic Package Manager. Now, uh, Glances should be available from the terminal, so I'm going to go ahead and click that, and let me put in Console, and let me right-click here, and uh, let me add that to Favorites, and then let's go ahead and launch it. All right, and so uh, if I type in glances, it should be, there we go. And so here's glances, and uh, I'll bring that to full screen, let you take a look at it. Um, the nice thing about glances over HTOP is this has a web portion available as well. 
So if you install glances dash or type in glances dash w, um, you'll hit the web portion. You can go out on your web browser and access the glances via the web. And you can do it on any uh, device you have uh, attached to your network, which is really nice. But you see you have some of the same information, but you got a lot more information. You can even monitor your Docker apps and containers and, and that kind of thing with, uh, with glances. You can't do that in HTOP. All right, so let me go ahead and cancel that out and uh, let's exit the terminal. And let's get back to where we were. And so we were at setting system and um, update manager. And you've got, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, if that's Yakuwaki or if that's Yakuake. Let me click that. That's a drop down terminal. This is nice to have. All right, and so. Uh, you can uh, select it, and then let me just go ahead and exit here and uh, close it. So you can bring it up anytime. You can set a key command, keystroke command, for, I'll call it Yakawaki, um, to bring it down just by hitting the key uh, stroke combinations on your keyboard. And you'll have a terminal at your ready at any time you want to use it. All right, so let's go back in here. So utilities, got Arc, Kate, KCalc, Ocular, which is a PDF reader. Spectacle, which is uh, belief for viewing images. Um, SUSE Studio Image Writer, which is nice. And then Voco Screen. Voco Screen is another uh, video desktop uh, dis um, recording software, open source. It's kind of like simple screen recorder for uh, grabbing your desktop and recording your desktop. But Voco Screen is another one. I've used Voco Screen, but I prefer System Screen Recorder. For web, you've got uh, HookTube, uh, Open Desktop, Skype Web, Telegram, and WhatsApp. Then you've got a help functionality, and then you've got your power and session. So you can lock your screen, log out, switch user, suspend, hibernate, reboot, or shut down. All right. Then over here is your favorites. So you've got your file manager, and it looks like the file manager here is Dolphin. So let me expand that. So that's quite nice. Uh, here, all right. So if I click on network and go out to SMB and see if it will pull up my shares that I have out on the network, I don't see them anywhere. Let me put in my IP address to that. So let me click on that and put in 192.168.1.125. Hit enter. Here it is. Okay, so we've got file store vol one. If I double click it. There's a SMB CIFS share that I have sitting out on my network. And so you can grab that as well here in Netrunner. So I like that. Go ahead and close Dolphin. All right. And come back up. So we've got, uh, this is probably Kate. It is. All right. That's Kate. So Kate is a, a code editor uh, and text editor if you've never used it. Uh, we've got that particular button, I'm not quite sure what that is. It looks like it is uh, Discover. Okay, so Discover is another way of installing packages in Netrunner. Uh, it's uh, common in Debian systems. And so let me uh, spread that out. And so I could just select one of these and, uh, and then it just hit the Install button, and that would install it. So I'm not going to do that, but you can do it that way. All right, and so here we have uh, Monitor, I believe system monitor and uh, so you can monitor your system quite nice so for username CPU usage memory shared memory and Windows title a um, uh, window title rather uh, and then you've got a settings here for show toolbar status bar configure the shortcuts and configure the toolbars etc etc so that is system monitor all right and let's come back up and if there's the console and then here is the uh, for leaving and for logging out and, th and things like that. All right, and so here with the panel, let's go across. We've got the uh, Dolphin. We've got the web browser, Firefox ESR. Over here, we can click that button. That's the Yakawaki. That's the pull-down menu. So you can just do it right there. You don't even need the keystroke combination. Um, here we've got the... Uh, Spectacle, which is for grabbing uh, images on the screen, snapshot or screenshots of images, and you can do that very easily there. I'm not going to do that now. 
Uh, here's my audio controls, okay, very nice. And then uh, got a calendar over here, all right. And uh, let's see, and over here we have the uh, panel controls, and uh, that is for history, okay. If I right click on the desktop, I can create a new folder, a new text file, HTML file. I can bring up a LibreOffice uh, Calc document, uh, a new one, a draw document, a presentation called Impress, or a writer document from LibreOffice by just right clicking here and left clicking on LibreOffice Writer. Um, I can link to a location for URL. I can link to an application or a basic link to a site or directory. I can refresh the desktop here. I can add a widget. So let me add uh, analog clock. I like the analog clock. Let me put that out there. Go ahead and close this. And um, let's uh, bring that over. And let's see if I can make this smaller. Yeah, let's shrink that down. And then if I come up here and hit the uh, edit, I can do a show second hand and apply it and click OK. And so now I've got a second hand running. So if I left click and hold it, bring this up, and I can move that up a little bit off the screen. And there we go. All right, so I've got my, my favorite widget, my analog clock out on the desktop. And then let's right click again. I can add panel. I can add application menu bar, default panel or empty panel. I can lock the widget, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then finally, configure the desktop. We already looked at that initially when we got in. And so that concludes the uh, review portion. I will tell you that I found Netrunner here to be very responsive. Uh, I like the bright colors with KDE Plasma 5 desktop. Um, KDE uh, has got a good reputation, but it's got some disadvantages as well. It's kind of heavy, but I like it. I like uh, the way it looks, and uh, it just renders really well on the desktop itself. But I do like K, uh, Netrunner. I, I think that Netrunner is a great distribution from what I've seen. I wouldn't have any problem using it as a daily driver. So uh, you might want to check that out. Go ahead and, and install it in a virtual box. You can run the live version. Uh, as you noticed when we went up and installed it, uh, or started to install, but we fired it up, rather, in VirtualBox. It does have a live version. Just remember, live is the user, and live is the password initially. Uh, and then if you like it, it's found all your hardware. You don't have any issue with problems with it. Uh, you got a network uh, connection, either wired or wireless. You can go ahead and install it on bare metal and give it a go. So this has been uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up on the video. Uh, it will help my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. And then off to the right, hit that notification bell and select all or personalized. And, uh, and that way, every time I upload a video, you'll see it. And so, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.